All right, you guys, we are back with Behind the Bikini. And I did not check what episode we're on, but I think we're on at 63 now. Because when you left, it was 60. And then I did two while you were gone. So that would make sense. I can do math. <laughs> two plus two equals four. <laughs> I know, right? I can do math this morning. We're, we're in a good spot if I can do math. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so welcome back. And welcome back to all of you out there watching, too. So if you haven't done so already, like, comment, subscribe, share. Um, all of the fun things that we always talk about and hit the buttons wherever they are. So today, yeah, I love those buttons, all those buttons. Today's just going to be kind of a catch up day because since, you know, since Jordan's been gone and out of the country for um, a few weeks and things like that, we want to kind of get a, get a feel for how you're feeling, how you're doing post, post Olympia, post, you know, starting your reverse, all that kind of stuff. So that's a whole challenge in and of itself, doing a reverse diet while you're traveling in a completely different continent <laughs> you know what i mean so um so we're gonna go through that um the clash was this past weekend were you you weren't here in the states while um while she was on stage were you or were you back yeah so i uh she she stepped on stage obviously on saturday we yeah. got back into town friday night at 9 30 p.m okay. and for me to wake up and start peaking her i got up at 3 30 in the morning so by the time you know we got home unpacked cleaned i think we went to bed around one and then so we took like a, a, a nap <laughs> and then woke up and we just stayed up at that point because we were we were so off by the time we walked in the door that night we were up for over 24 hours yeah. and then we were just trying to like kind of get back on this time frame so it actually worked out perfectly it was a rough day but um, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so i was i was in town but still like you know, traveling and adjusting. Not sure where like you that. were. Yeah. Well, that was, and that was the same thing. Like when I came back from Japan, cause it was a 13 hour time difference. So I just told myself on the flight, I'm like, I'm not going to sleep on the flight because then when I get home, it's going to be midnight. I can go right to bed and I'll be right back on my time zone, which is what happened. So it worked out well. Sometimes you have to just suck it up for the first, the first day you're back. <laughs> and then, but it's worth totally. it if you do that, you know what I mean? It's worth it. So you don't have that jet lag the rest of the week, you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, but in the process, you, you know, you're mentioning you're a little under the weather, so it's probably just everything catching up to you. Right. Yeah. And just everybody's sick. I mean, I, I okay. had clients checking in over the last couple of days. They're sick. You know, when we were over in Europe, you know, you're on the planes and you're out in these crowded areas and everybody's coughing and, I knew it was going to happen. I'm glad that it happened while I got home. I started to feel a little bit sick the night after the wedding because because that was the the whole reason why I went over there was my best friend Nikki got married. So the next morning I woke up and I wasn't feeling that great. However, she had like this beach party the second day. Okay. So I just like woke up. I felt awful. I didn't tell anyone I felt like under the weather. I'm like, I'm just going to keep, you know, powering through. And we were in the sun all day. And I really think that that helped oh, just kind okay. of like be in the sun, you know, bring you back to life a little bit. And I actually felt a lot better, like toward the <laughs> end of the day and the night. And then I, w it was just done. And then Drew actually got sick when we got to Amsterdam and Amsterdam was like super rainy, super cold. So that just kind of pushed him farther into the sickness, which yeah. stunk because we went to Paris right after that, which was like, the end of the trip like we saved right. that like as like you know the the finale and yeah. he was like really sick the first day but he rallied through it so now he's better <laughs> and oh, then I God. just woke up sick yesterday so yeah it's it's a lot you know traveling yeah. overseas like that and you know you go from like this big structured like diet and supplements and immunity supplements and things like that to basically nothing because yeah. you know you're going overseas so i didn't know like what i could take and blah 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 so i think just my body was kind of adjusting to to all of that the different weather changes and and et cetera. So, yeah. Well, I even said that we just going to Vegas for the Olympia you know, after a week after my show, I was like, just the, just the climate change alone. You know, we talked about that. Like I was having headaches. I mean, my, I had a nosebleed, you know, all that kind of stuff just from the climate change, let alone from, you know, going all the way into, like I said, a different hemisphere, really. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So <laughs> it's funny so, the first year that we went, that I qualified for the Olympia, it was in Vegas. And then that it was in 2022, it was in December. So it was super cold. Yeah. Drew and I had walked the strip. We stayed a couple of days after this was after the Olympia. We would walk the strip from one end to the other. Yep. When we got back to the hotel room, I look at him and he's just, he's got blood all over his face. He's bleeding from his nose and from his mouth. And oh, I was like, wow. what's going on with you? And it was because of like the dryness. Yeah. And when he got back into the hotel and the heater was on, it's just kind of made everything come out. I was like, what's happening? Yeah. What's going on? There's gotta so be, you know, there was a lot of people that said that at, and at the Olympia that they got nosebleeds and stuff. There's gotta be a solution for that. Like, 
you know, going from a climate that's not as dry going into Vegas, I wonder what it is, like what you can do. The only thing I could think of was like Gatorade and stuff like that for hydration, but I don't know about like the nose sprays. I know that sounds really ridiculous, but keeping it like, it's just like anything moisturizer, right? So like those little nose sprays that you could put in your, and it just keeps everything like really moisturized. And so like Greg, Greg, Jamie's husband carries that in his bag all the time. Like, why do you have that? And now I understand why. (laughs) Okay. That's, that's actually a really, I'm going to make note of that. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah. So, huh. Interesting. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. it's, It's the mucous membranes and all that in there. Okay. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. See, I learned something learned new something today. New. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, okay, let me make a note. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, that's something, you know, and it just makes me laugh because we're not going to get into politics or anything like that, but you know, we just had the election and it happened and um, RFK Jr. is going to be taking over, you know, like cleaning out, cleaning the house as far as making America healthy again. You know, and he mentioned in his, his little tweet the other day about, you know, making what he's going to make available to Americans. What are those things being ivermectin? So I don't know if I've, I, I can't remember if I've ever talked about, I think I've talked about it here on the podcast, you but have, once, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. once or twice we've gotten into it and I know you're a big, big yeah. Champion. Yeah. I mean, I, whenever, and I haven't done it, I'll say I probably should do it now because it's, it's, it's going into flu season and stuff like that again. You know what I mean? But like when I would go to shows, I would. I front load it, you know, prophylactically as far as, you know, taking ivermectin, um, going into crowded where I knew I was going to be around people. Like if you're going to be on flights and things like that. So then that just is, again, it's just a preventative. Um, and ever since that Olympia in 2020, I haven't gotten COVID because I got COVID when I got home after that, everybody did, (laughs) everybody did, you know? So, (laughs) so from that point on, I was taking ivermectin anytime I traveled and, um, you know, I have, again, I haven't done it probably since the beginning of summer, but I should, I probably should now. Cause again, it's flu season, which is why everybody's getting sick right now. You know, it's the changing of the seasons, all Absolutely. this kind of stuff. So you just gotta be careful. I have been taking more immunity stuff just as a preventative because I am still in prep and everything too. And I know that my body's depleted and all of that kind of stuff. So, and I have to tell people like even my clients now, I've got three girls getting on stage this weekend and all of them. I'm like, you just got to, I'm like, you got to be real careful. I'm like, you're super depleted right now. You know what I mean? So just take it easy, recover, like sleep, you know, all those kinds of things. It's so hard. I don't know about you. And I know, I know you're probably still just messed up from the travel, but the daylight, daylight savings time has completely fucked up my sleep. Completely fucked it up. Well, I'm in Arizona now, so we don't change. Oh, yeah, that's right. We talked about that this morning. Yes. You're the only people that don't. You know, like, like y'all are in like the, the 25th century where we're back here in ancient times. <laughs> yes. I, I love Arizona. I'm actually going right after this to the DMV. We're establishing our residency. We're getting all of our, I'm like, I'm never leaving. This is oh awesome. <laughs> I was like, I am so messed up from it. Like I can't. Yeah, it, it does. It, and when I lived in Florida, which was on the same time zone as you, I was always fucked up. Like your hunger, yeah. everything. You just, yeah. you just feel off. Yep. I'm like, I'm still going to bed at the same time. I always go to bed at night and then I'm getting up an hour early and I'm yep. laying there in bed. I'm like, why can't I just go back to sleep? I can't I'm like, I'm just staring yeah. at the ceiling. So at that point I'm just like, screw it. I'm going to get up and go to work. So the good thing is, is I'm getting like most of my work done before noon, you know, which is, which is great. Awesome. However, <laughs> I'm just not sleeping enough. You know what I mean? Like I just, I want, I want a couple more hours of sleep. I'm averaging, I, would, I didn't even look at it, but I'm averaging it like I don't know, six and a half hours, which normally I'm, I was getting to seven and a half, eight hours. And it makes a big difference. It makes such a huge difference. And I'm just like, oh, like, I'm just hoping, I don't know. I'm hoping the next few days I can, I can get back to normal. I, I just want to be able to sleep for another hour in the morning. That's it. You know, I know it's, like, it's just one of those things where you're laying there and you're wide awake, but you almost yeah. have to just kind of force yourself to keep yeah. laying there. Yeah. But it's it's also then your brain starts going of like all the things you could get up and start doing. So I, I totally get it. It's it's a freaking bear. Yeah. yeah. And part of another part of me is like, well, I'm OK if I'm on the sleep schedule for next week because next week is Ben Weeder. So that's our last like big show of the year. And prejudging for the pros starts at 8 a.m. Which means for hair and makeup, I'm up at the butt crack way before 2 a.m 3 a.m yeah correct so i'm like it's almost like it's not a bad thing that i'm that i'm getting up this early 
but I still need to sleep regardless. Yeah, like since we've got that before we left, and I, obviously I was still prepping. I was sleeping till probably about six forty-five, seven. Like if I sleep, if I try to sleep any more than that, my dogs wake me up. Yeah. So since we've been back, you know, we're back on a normal, you know, sleeping schedule. But like we're wide awake right now, like five forty-five, six. So Drew and I just been waking up, and we're we've kind of flipped our schedule around to like start our day with a little bit of cardio, and then we were doing our recovery okay. in the morning. So that mm-hmm. way we're not like going right to our laptops. Yeah. Um, and then just kind of starting to slowly start to work around like seven, you know, seven thirty, mm-hmm. and it's it's been really nice. And also, too, with, you know, being on the different time zone, getting up a little bit earlier also helps us when we go to the yes. East Coast and we travel and we're, you know, have to be up so early for shows. So it's it's like we kind of want to live on East Coast time, you know, if you will, yeah. out here. However, the season is winding down. So we have like four more weekends we have to travel and then, you know, hopefully we get a, a few more weeks of break. But, um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's really important with these different time zones to try to, like – keep some sort of consistent schedule for yourself because if you go back and forth all the time like we do you know it's it's your body's just like where am i where what time is it when are we getting up what am i eating it's absolutely difficult you know that's that is one of the reasons why i've gotten my schedule to be later because I have clients on the west coast too so it's kind of a good happy medium when i get up in the morning i've got probably four clients or so that have checked in by the time i wake up and then by the time I get to get through with them, I've got more coming in from, you know, over on the West Coast kind of thing. So right. it ends up working out pretty well that way. Um, you know, the last few days of getting up early has not been bad because I'm still in prep. So just like you, I'm using that time. I get up and I go pose for, you know, half hour or whatever. And while my coffee's brewing and things like that. And so I'm using the time. But again, it's just I just want to be able to sleep a little bit more (laughs) you know like I just I need I need the recovery you know so it's like and and what happens with me too is I always say well I could just take a nap later on in the day I never do I never I never do it never happens no no yeah I get it because like when we had those first couple days even in Greece like when we got to Greece it was brutal um we land we left Tampa at like 11 30 a.m that time then we landed in jfk for the jfk to greece flight at like 1 30 so we left around three that time and then we landed in Paris or um greece at like 8 30 in the morning and we couldn't check into our airbnb till 3 p.m oh no we were by the time we got into our airbnb we were up like 38 hours at that point wow. and we had to start work because technically at that time, 3 p.m., you guys are waking up and everybody was checking in and that was a Monday morning for us. So yeah. by the time we all finally got to bed, we were up at like 40 hours at that. We were wow. exhausted. So where we should have been like resting, we couldn't. So it took us three days just to kind of get acclimated, you know, into Greece mm-hmm. time. And we all kept saying like, we're going to take a nap and then you never do, you know, it's, but we were struggling. And then when we got yeah. home, Drew and I said the same thing, like when we woke up at three 30 in the morning for our clients in class, we were like, we'll just take a nap in the middle of the day. And then it's so exciting. Cause Shawana was, you know, doing well. And, yeah. you know, her peak was a little bit more hands-on than normal because she did start her cycle literally two days before the show. Oh, so wow. I was very, very, very hands-on making sure that I was making sure everything was going. So like when I thought I was going to be taking a nap, I was actually having her check in with me a little bit more frequently in between prejudging and finals. So it is what it is. You know, yeah. we, we, what is a nap? What is a nap? I know, right? Cat nap? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll sleep when we're dead. We're sleeping when we're dead. <laughs> so, so let's talk about that for real quickly because Shawana won the overall. So um, that whole story began at CCTS last year. So she actually she actually won a sponsorship with me at. So for those of you that don't know, they come to CCTS and um, I give out sponsorships at the at the event. Um, Fit Body Fusion does as well. Jordan is one of them. So she she likes Shawana too. So Shawana just 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 walked away with like everything last year. <laughs> so that's how the coaching relationship started with with you and her. So talk a little bit about how that's been for you guys. Yeah, I mean, I. Um... I saw Shawana at CCTS last year and I literally texted Drew when I was, you know, putting together who I was going to offer the sponsorship to. And I said, if I, if if this girl is not successful with me, like I deserve to be fired. Like she just has an incredible physique, you know, amazing genetics. Um, Such a sweet girl. She is um, a therapist, you know, Mm -hmm. so a counselor. So she works really long hours. She has a lot going on as well, like super high stress. So like when I say that she, 
fought for this prep. She did. Mm -hmm. Um, We actually pulled out of prep at one point because stress was so high. And then she basically came back to me a couple weeks later and was like, I don't feel good about this. Like, I really want to finish what I started. Like, I'll figure Mm -hmm. it out. And she did. Um, So she looks absolutely, obviously amazing. Um, It's interesting with Shawana. I think she would be open with this, that she has some like PTSD type thoughts from her last coach and her last, you know, show experience that I was kind of battling for a little bit. Um, and it's cool. We had a conversation after the show on uh, Sunday morning and she was like, I'm, I'm all in now. I totally get where you're coming from. I see it. So it's cool. You know, sometimes you have to like earn the trust from your athlete and get that feedback from the judges for them to really understand, you know, what we're going towards. And, and, you know, Drew and I, this entire year have been talking about that. Not that Shawana is a true novice, but like we really want to focus on like the true novice experience and like making sure that first time athletes or newer athletes to the sport are having a great experience. So they're not turned off and not that Shawana was turned off in the sport. Obviously she wanted to compete again, but she had this idea of like what the bikini criteria is or is not supposed to look like. And obviously it's changing all the time and you Mm -hmm. really have to start relying on these coaches that are at the shows and really looking and paying attention to what it looks like and what they are awarding. And obviously I'm at a show every weekend. So it was um, really, really cool. I knew when she checked in with me on um, Saturday morning, I was like, gonna be it like sandy's really really gonna like this look she did start start her cycle two days before so we were kind of you know real i was really really conscious of like feeding and sodium and water so again like most of the time we're cruising into the show with water sodium and just kind of manipulating food but i was actually doing the opposite i was manipulating a lot of things to try to get her as dry as i could um and it worked out you know she looked she looked absolutely amazing she checked in with me after pre-judging and she looked even better because we did a, you know, a couple meals just to kind of get, get her f- a little bit more full, worked on the walk. Um, and I, I was feeling pretty confident. I When Aaron told me the overall was starting, I was literally sweating, wait, just waiting. Um, so yeah, I mean, she is stunning. I mean, yeah. she is absolutely stunning. I can't tell you the amount of messages that I got from just random people and other coaches that were at the show that obviously didn't know that she was my athlete until I started posting about her and they were like, she was, she was incredible. You know, like she came out and she was just, wow. So that's really cool to also hear like from other people's perspectives that aren't on fit body feet, you know, and they were just reaching out. Yeah. Congrats. She looked amazing. So this, the cool thing is, is that this isn't our best, you know, I always bring my girls in about 85% to their warm up show so that we get that feedback for nationals and can capitalize on it. And basically her feedback was to come in a little bit tighter in the glutes, which we knew okay. she was soft because of being a little bit watery from her cycle. Um, and then long-term grow more glutes. We knew that. So yeah. that's, that was the perfect feedback. We're going to, we have four and a half weeks at this point to capitalize on that. She's going to be more than ready. She actually got a little bit of a diet break this week and then we're going to kind of start hammering it again. So I'm really, really, really excited for her. Right. She's got a tremendous potential. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, she's and she's just got that it factor. You know what I mean? And that's that's something that's something you can't teach. I, I hate to say it, but it's just it just is what it is. Either you got it or you don't. You know what I mean? And it's like, and she definitely does. You know what I mean? I, I, I mean, that's why she got so so much so many awards at ccts everybody was like we like her (laughs) yeah and her suit was beautiful like i love that blue that you guys came came up with and it was such a beautiful like contrast to her skin tone and she had this beautiful like literally like i want to call it like flawless makeup like whoever did her makeup did such an amazing job like she just looked she Timeless did post that. I don't, know, I don't remember who it was, but she did post who did her makeup. It's an makeup. it's an Orlando artist. I know yeah. that. Like somebody, it's and she lives in Orlando too. Okay, so okay. in the show was yeah, in Orlando. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she yeah. obviously like has a community out there. Yeah, and she just looked. I mean, stunning. Like when she checked oh. in with me that morning, I was like. Chef's kid. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is so great when I'm not there, right? Like usually I would be at a class show in Florida, like one of the major yeah. shows, and you know this. I obviously was coming home, so there was no way I was making it. So just when everything was kind of clicking into place with me not being there, um, Erin was there from Fit Body Fusion to stop on site, so she helped out a ton. You know, and that's the great thing about our team. Like if I can't be there, I feel confident knowing that errands there if somebody somebody needs something you know or one of us is there for all of yeah, our athletes absolutely well that's why i said um because you reached out to me about um ben weeder and she asked me if, you know if i could help i was like yeah i'm like of course be <laughs> I'm, there, like, yeah. I'm like i'll be running around like a crazy person anyway right what's one more so, what's two more yeah, what's two more just go ahead <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> yeah. so it's you know that's 
that's why I try to I try to impart that on people. So you're talking about like the true novice, but also people are just coming into Fit Body just so they can understand the culture. It's like even if I'm not there at your show, we've got somebody who's going to be able to take care of you most likely. You know what I mean? That's 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 the great thing about having so many people. Um, you know, and, and why we suggest certain shows to go to things like that as well. You know what I mean? So like I have a girl that's competing this weekend. So we have a local show this weekend here in Virginia. It's literally down the street from my house. I stay at home. So, um, I do the, I sponsor the hair and makeup there, but then I've got three of my fit body girls doing it too. So, um, I've got one of my, I already am. It's been a, it's it's been a fun week. (laughs) I'd just like to take a moment to welcome our new channel partners, Prozis. If you are unfamiliar with them, go ahead and go down into my description box now, click on the link, go check out their site. They are the leading supplement sports nutrition company based out of Portugal, been around for 17 years. You might be asking what makes Prozis unique? Well, everything that they make is made in-house or with trusted partners. They have to go through rigorous testing in Portugal in order to even get any products on the market. So what you're gonna find, you're gonna find really high quality pure supplementation. And one of the biggest things for me is I have some GI issues. So being able to eat some of these more healthy protein treats and things like that and not have any gut issues, oh, worth its weight in gold. Go check them out. Click on the link in my description box below. Use the code CUTIES10 to get all of your discounts and even some special surprises. They're always putting out some amazing promotions. Let them know that I sent you and let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching and thank you for supporting our channel. Now, Go optimize your own athletic abilities and check out prozis.com. So again, why I don't mind getting up at 5 a.m. right now. Um, right. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, and I've got, and I've got two girls. I'm peaking for um, Ben Weeder next week too. So um, one of my girls, she, we did her warm up show in her, her home area there up in, up in New England. So she went up to Connecticut and it was good. It was the same weekend I did the Georgia show. Um, everything went well. She qualified for nationals, both open and masters. So we were happy about that. It was a big show too. There was like, I don't know, 12, 13 girls in her classes. So, but I was like, well, she's like, I want to do one more show. I said, yeah, we know we want to do one more show. I was like, why don't you come down to Virginia? So she's actually driving down right now as we speak, she's driving down to Virginia so she can do this show. So I can beat her in person. So then we know again, what we can do for for next year for nationals and all of that as well. So it's, it's data, it's a, data, data, yeah, do it when yeah. you can. Yeah. And she's, she's one that she's just been burning through her food. I'm like, Oh my God, girl. <laughs> I was like, I can't feed you enough. <laughs> I was like, all our yeah. girls are so healthy. Darn. Our girls I are know. Cycles, two days before shows. Oh, eating into their shows. I know, right? Woo, Amazing. What a problem. Amazing. What a problem she's have. like, so when I said to her peak week, she goes, this is this is the peak week. I said, yeah, this is it. <laughs> like we're just. I was like, and every time you check in with me, we're going to decide if we're going to eat more, which we've eaten more every day. So, you know, this is this is it. This is what we do. You know, yeah. when you're yeah. when you're in shape and when you're on point, like that, that's it's easy. It should not be hard. You know. Yeah. No, you shouldn't have to deplete as much. I have had a lot of consult calls since I've been back. Obviously, just catching up on everything, and it's a conversation I keep having with people, which is. So sad, you know, a lot of women right now just want to stay so lean, you know, in in their off season, or they're so afraid to put on weight. And listen, I get it. Like I get I get the mental fortitude and then you know what you have to kind of accept. But, you know, it's hard. It's hard to kind of break that barrier and try to teach, you know, that in order to improve, you have to get a little uncomfortable with eating some body fat. Some of these women are like, peeled like one of the girls i was talking to i'm like i could put you on stage in two weeks if we really push like you're you're right there just don't have the tissue you know so it's difficult it's 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 been a challenge and i'm seeing it more and more which is a little bit scary i feel like we're kind of going backwards in that regard that people are you know starting to get fearful of really taking those improvement seasons i don't know why i don't know if these it's these blanket statements that people hear from some of these top coaches about that you shouldn't be x around over stage weight or you shouldn't you know bup, bup, bup. and we've talked about this before you know i don't agree with that you know i think those are very absolute statements and mm-hmm. everybody is so different you know especially from a hormonal place of how much weight they have to put on to get a cycle back or to be internally healthy on paper and um something that i'm going to continue to try to keep educating people on you know especially if they want to go to nationals like you're not going to be able to build the amount of tissue to be competitive if you're not willing to eat and train heavy and you know put on a little bit of body fat well i think that there's two schools of thought going on right now and i'm seeing it more and more like you said there's the girls that um 
that don't want to be involved in fitness industry and they're all about po- body positivity and all that kind of stuff. And like actually to the extent of where it's a little unhealthy that way. Um, and then there's the Ozempic trend, <laughs> you know, and for me, that's really scary because that takes me back to like when I was growing up in the nineties and stuff and everybody was dieting so hard and starving themselves, all that kind of thing. And so it's like that, that look is coming back around. There's this, and I'm not going to say who she is, but there's this one girl that I've followed forever. She's relatively local. She's not a competitor. She's just a, she's just a pretty girl. Right. And she's gorgeous. She's absolutely stunning. Right. And, um, she's always been like a curvy, but healthy curvy girl. Not like, not like thick, thick, like, like us off season thick, you know? So beautiful look model, all that kind of stuff. Um, she didn't post a lot for a while and then she just came back out and I think it was, I think it was Miami swim week or something she just did or something like that. Oh my God, she looks like a skeleton. I was like, that's Ozempic right there. You know what I mean? And it's like, and everybody's commenting, you go girl, look at all your muscle, da, da, da. Like, no girl, you're, you're, you're skin and bones. That's not muscle. You're not lean. There's a difference. It's, it's, it's actually very, very scary. Like it's very, very scary. And it's a warped it's a warped sense of, of that. And like, you know, we do a lot here at Fit Body with, with peptides and things like that, but there's a way to do them safely. And then there's a way to do them not safely at all. <laughs> Appropriately. <laughs> Correct. Too. Like yeah. not everybody needs to be no. on a peptide or a weight loss no. peptide. No. no, like it's not just like this. Oh, you're starting bodybuilding. Cool. Well, let's give you this. Like, no, it's it's definitely person specific. And I think that people then start to kind of lean into those products to get them to the goal. Um, and then going back to, you know, especially with bodybuilding, like a peptide, like that's not going to help you gain, you know, mm-hmm. muscle. It's actually going to do the opposite. So it's it's really understanding what your goal is. You know, and so that's one of the first questions I always ask on the calls. What's your goal? Like, what is your goal right. when you step on stage? Because that's going to determine our next steps in the trajectory and timeline. And yeah, it's really, it, it is really scary, the Ozempic trend. Um, mm-hmm. And the, this is going to be one of those things, too, that, you know, two, four years from now, we're going to start seeing research studies on all the backlash from these these things yeah. and long-term usage. And 100%. it's 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 not out yet because it's not been long enough, but it will be, you know, just mm-hmm. like, not that I'm saying I'm pro or not pro on the vaccines, but now we're seeing all the kind of repercussions from COVID. And when we just had to get those vaccines out as soon as possible, we didn't really have time to test anything. And now years later, we're starting to see the repercussions of that. You know, it's the same with any drug that comes on the market this fast. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, again, going back to the, I mentioned the RFK juniors tweet, he said the same thing in his tweet about about peptides and stuff like that. Like he's going to start putting this information out there, that education out there because big pharma has suppressed it so much. So, you know, it's just like, I think that's oh. what people re- they get to realize too is big pharma is like a business. It is yeah, a business. It runs the entire United States. United States, like literally, you know. So it's not, that, it's not guys, it's not the president. It's the people that are paying the president. <laughs> like it's, it's the Well, and the people that continuously go back to that and fuel the business. Why is the business gonna go anywhere if we keep dumping money into it? Well, that's and that's again that goes back to the issues with the way our health system is is set up. There is no money in the cure. Always remember that. There is no money in the cure. Mm -hmm. Their goal is to keep you attached. The more that they can get, the more pills they can give you, the more of this they get from you. They you know, cure you. Really you're not coming back. In um, Amsterdam is when Drew started to get sick, so we went to a pharmacy. Anything with, I'm gonna I'm gonna botch this, so I'm really mm-hmm. sorry. I think the active ingredient in like Nyquil is Sudafed or some, mm-hmm. like something like that. Yeah. Anything with Sudafed in it is banned in Amsterdam. So when you go into a pharmacy to get you know something to help, like it's really all like neuropath like natural products like he had like a sore throat so we got he had like lozenges with yep. some sort of active ingredients like we could not find medicine in amsterdam at all we had to wait till we got to paris we landed in paris and the first place we went to was a pharmacy and then it was fine but i thought that was very interesting especially the culture and climate of amsterdam mm-hmm. so maybe yeah. that is why you know they they have those things banned because they don't want everybody on everything but yeah. 
um it's very a, it's a, interesting in general it's across the board though like because this is what i talk about with pros this all the time they have so many um, rules and regulations and restrictions before they can put health foods and supplements on the market that we don't have here because right. because they don't that our big pharma here makes money off of that stuff yep and they're pushing it and then yeah. they're, they're like we don't we don't need those things that's right. So it's like, in the, I was even talking to my my rep from there, and he's like, we actually had to take some of our stuff off the market that we were selling to you guys over in the states because because of what was in it. Like, they won't allow us to to ship it over there, whatever it was. I, I, again, I'm going to botch that. But they had to take some because I was asking. I was like, there are certain things I was ordering, and he's like, we can't. He's like, we can't make those anymore because their restrictions there wouldn't allow them to make make them anymore. Yeah, like we're starting were, to see that too. Like things yeah. are changing. Like as far as even with getting, you know, pharmaceutical grade Anavar from a, a pharmacy or you yeah. know a clinic, it's the the restrictions are so much more. Which hey, I don't yeah. mind that. Like yeah. maybe that needs to be done. But um, you also start to see some of these other trends where it's almost going like again favoring big pharma and pushing people right. back to that. You know, so. It's, that's why for the longest America's time, a scary place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's why for the longest time, you know, marijuana was not legal that, you know, and still not in a lot of places because they weren't making money off of it. Now they figured out ways to make money off of it. So guess what? Now it's legal. <laughs> Except in Florida. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I know. I was like, I was like, it is, it is a lot of places. It's not, and it's not a lot of places still. It's one of those things that's rolling out, but you know, it's, it's legal here in, in Virginia. You know what I mean? Like legal here in Arizona. Yeah, it's because they're figuring yep. out how to ways make make money on it. If they can make yep. money on it, they're going to make it legal. I mean, Absolutely. hello, the entire our entire country is built off of tobacco. Why is that okay? People <laughs> die, die from literally yeah. cancer from smoking every day. Correct. <laughs> yes, and that is what our country was built on was tobacco. Yep. So, yeah, <clears throat> yes, yep. 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 Don't understand that one. There's just there's so many things like that in our society today though like not even just not even drug and and food administration stuff it's not even that just in general like guys follow the money follow mm -hmm. the motivation behind it follow why they would want you to be doing that and then make your own educated decision i'm not saying that because somebody's making money off of it that it's bad that's not what i'm saying because we all have to make money it's a capitalistic society we got to make money <laughs> we got got to keep the lights on you know I always say the yep. likes don't keep the lights on so <laughs> We, you know, <laughs> true. We, we have, it's true. It's true. Yeah. We got to make money. So there's, there's that, but just understand what it is you're buying. Like again, right. do your own independent research, say, okay, this is why I should do this. This is why I shouldn't do that. You know, whatever it is, make your own independent decision. Right. Yeah. So little, little, little soapbox. Little tangent. For a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but on, on other topics, so how was the food over in, in Europe? Like, was it easy to get decent, healthy food or was it hard to do that? Or what? How, how did you manage coming right out of a show? And I saw your, you know, your progress videos you posted and stuff. I mean, you didn't really like put weight on or anything like that. So how did you manage all that? Uh, I'm going to start out by saying this. So this is probably like my sixth improvement season. And mm -hmm. the first time I ever followed my reverse diet was last year after the Olympia. I, we've had mm -hmm. the podcast since then. So, you know, our longtime listeners know that. Um, last year was the first time I like followed the reverse diet to a T via macros, et cetera. And that was really, really successful for me. Um, coming out of this year's Olympia, I, I could not not do this trip. My best friend was right. getting married. So yeah. it was, you know, I had to really strategize this. The good thing was that Jamie was traveling with, with me. So, you know, Jamie and I were together the entire 15 days. So I was very communicative with Jamie up front. You know, how do you want this to look? And she said, I just want you to intuitively eat if, you know, you're going to take your weight every day. If we feel like you're, you know, getting off, then I'm going to tell you. And I was like, mm -hmm. perfect. Like, you know, pull me aside, tell me what we need to do, whatever. Um, so to be honest, I did not like look for chicken and rice. Like I literally just said, what's the plan for the day? Okay, we're going to go to breakfast and then we're going to walk around and then we're going to go to dinner. So I'm going to eat a really big breakfast. I'm going to kind of snack in the middle of the day. I just tried to make really good choices. Mm -hmm. um, I had anything I wanted within reason. Now, what Jamie did comment on was like one morning she ordered a chocolate croissant with like a bunch of like Nutella and stuff in it. And normally if something like that is on my plate, I would eat the entire thing. Like mm -hmm. I can't leave food on a plate. I took two bites and I pushed the plate away. She's like, that's it. 
And I'm like, that's it. She's like, this is where you're going to thrive because you're just, you're taking a couple of bites. You're asking yourself, is this worth it? And then you're moving on. Now, when I was in Amsterdam, I had two Stroop waffles that, that whole, you know, within the 48 hours because I loved it. And that's something Mm -hmm. I wanted and it was fine. So it's like, you're picking and choosing at that point, what's worth it. What's not, I can't tell you how many times that I ordered a drink. I didn't like it. And I just pushed it and I didn't drink it because I always ask myself, is this worth it to me? Um, In Greece, we had the best food. So that was the first half of the trip. Um, And the food there, just like everybody says, like the quality is so good. Like my skin was beautiful this trip. No, my my husband grew up in in Spain and that's what he said. The food is completely different. Completely different. I mean, the first night we got there, that 40 hour day, we found a local pizza shop up the street. We walked up there. We shared between the four of us, three pizzas and a pasta. And we all got done and we were like, we're satisfied. But yeah. like normally if you would eat that kind of food in the States, you're like gluttonous. You're like, mm. yeah. like yeah. we just felt good. Like it, yeah. like it just felt nutrient. Like it was so odd. It was bizarre. Um, so that's really how I, how I structured the entire trip. There were some mornings where I woke up and I was like, you know, up a few pounds. And the next morning I'd wake up and I like, you know, dropped it right back down. We were so active. We walked everywhere, you know, so that obviously helps. And again, I wouldn't recommend this to a typical person, like right. going on a trip like this and intuitively eating, you know, a couple things to remember is this is my sixth improvement season and the first three, four, I blew, you know? So yeah. like I, if I would have done this kind of situation years ago, which I have done in 2022, right after the Olympia, Drew and I went on a cruise and I came back from the trip up 25 pounds from stage weight, you know? So like there have been these situations where I've blown it and I've, learned every time how to do this. Yeah. Um, you know, the second thing is I was with Jamie, you know, the entire time, you know, so obviously my coach is right next to me at every single meal. So that obviously makes me a, a little bit more mindful and B, you know, she was there to be like, Hey, you're doing a really good job. And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, you know, and I just had that, my, my person with me at all times. Um, so I think that's why it was so successful. But again, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for everybody. Like if I had a choice, I would not have done a 15 day trip this close to, you know, being post-show. However, going into the Olympia, I was pushing extremely hard. I had a trainer that I was training with every single day going into the Olympia. Those sessions, especially the lower body days were two hours. Mm -hmm. Um, so I was pushing extremely hard physically going yeah. into the Olympia. So I think that my body needed it. The needed the food, needed the nourishment. I did one day of 30 minutes of cardio and like a little total body, like three sets of 15 the entire trip. I, that was okay. the only exercise I did minus walking. Yeah. Um, and I just kept dropping, you know, so obviously that tells you the body is taking a break, relaxing. Exactly. So yep. since I've been home, 100% back on my macros, you know, reverse dieting, I have no cardio in my plan right now, 10 K steps a day, which is great. I have been very vocal to Jamie about my goals for this off season and like the weight I want to stay around and to help keep me accountable. And, you know, and that's the thing I think too, is that the more communicative you are with your coach on what you want to see, then they can help you, you know, stay accountable. You know, sometimes people are like, I have this idea of like what I want, but then I don't want to say that to my coach because what if I do get eight pounds above stage weight and then I'm not done growing? You know what I mean? Like I want to be very communicative upfront about what makes me comfortable and like what my best version is. And if she has a rebuttal to that, she'll tell me. Um, So yeah, I'm super excited. I'm super excited to be home and start training again. I am going to stick with a trainer a couple of days a week. Um, I think that's really good for me, especially with how busy I get during the day just to have someone that's there and pushing me. So mm-hmm. I'm really excited for that. We also have a really badass gym that's about to open in Arizona. They have spent $8 million on this project and they are going to have pretty much every piece of equipment that I need. Um, so I'm really excited for that as well. Um, so, and then I have some consultations for my breast augmentation too, that I know oh, people yeah. are like, did you get that done? Like what's going on? So we're, uh, I'm still trying to find a doctor for that. Um, and that is my intention too, is to get my breast fixed. So okay. we'll see more, more okay. information to come. Well, just to touch on a few of the things that you said, cause I wanted to kind of add my own little tidbits on there. So what you were talking about with the eating the, the croissant and then pushing it away, <clears throat> I don't know if you saw, I did a little, I've got a new segment I'm doing now, um, coffee to cigars. So actually oh, one cool. of, yeah, one of my clients sent me a, a message this past weekend because she had a similar experience to you 
where she was on vacation and they, you know, she was just having a hard time managing food. And she was doing the same thing you were as far as like, just trying to pick the right things while she's out. And again, it's just a lifestyle client, not prep or anything like that. So she's just, she's in a little mini cut right now. She's doing a photo shoot and um, she felt like crap because she had a whole cheesecake. Right. And I like a whole piece. And I told her, I said, like a whole cheesecake. No, no, that's no. very silly. Whole, whole piece, whole piece. Got it. <laughs> but I my, put down a whole piece of cheesecake. Yeah, 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 yeah. But my 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 advice to her was what you just did was you know take a couple of bites, say thank you, appreciate it, and then move on. You know what I mean? Like, but again, she's brand new with this. So like you were saying, like you've blown six of your or five of your improvement seasons that's taking you this long to get to this point. You know what I mean? So it's okay. I told her so what she did as far as writing into me and asking for help, that was the right thing to do, you know, because now she's like, I, I told her to just remember what you feel like right now. I said, don't beat yourself up over this, but like, remember this feeling so that when this opportunity comes again, you can push it away, have a bite, push it away, you know, just like you said. And then, and then, like you said, that's going to set you up for success. That's the piece right there. Because you're not going to feel like you're deprived. You're you're getting to still have the treat, but then you don't feel like crap after you have it. You know, you don't feel like shit. You don't meet yourself, beat yourself up here and have digestive issues and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, <clears throat> that's something you learn as you move forward. And I think that's really important to, to note too, because I'm the same way when I had my first... Girl, when I had my first improvement season back 15 years ago, holy Jesus, <laughs> that for those first couple of weeks off, I was like, eat everything in sight. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. that was at the end of the year it was November. So I was going to like Christmas parties and I saw pictures of myself at Christmas parties. I was like, holy shit, what did I do? Oh and that's, my God. that's the biggest thing too, is to remember is that most of the time people are coming off stage, like at the end of the year when the holidays yeah. are coming up. So like, don't you want to save it for the holidays? Not yeah, for this yeah, like yeah. random, you know, thing. And I think too, like the mindset is like, I deserve this. I deserve to eat like this. And it's like, no, you deserve to treat your body right. It just exactly did a right. 20 plus week long prep for you. It deserves for you to take care of it and to make sure you reverse out of it to get it into a healthy place, not and put yourself in an even worse position. And that's exactly what I told her too. I said, this feeling that you're feeling right now is your body telling you, please don't do this to me again. Correct. You know? It's your yeah, body like, rejecting it. Why am I it. sweating? And why is my heart rate up after I eat a meal? Because your body's like, what the they fuck just happened? Yeah, yeah, what yeah. What do I do with all of this? That is mm -hmm. that is a stress response to your binge. And then yep. people, you know, and I struggled with this too. I kept asking people all the time. And when I finally met Celeste Rains Turk, I said, what is the definition of binging? Because I think that's different for everybody. Yeah. But like, but like I was binging, but I was telling myself, you're not binging. You're just eating normal. But yeah. no, I was you're like a normal person. Binging. No, no, for but you, that's, that's binge. the story that we start 100%. to tell ourselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I'll say the same thing. Like I'm not, because I'm not, I'm still in prep, right? So, but my calories are, are what, 2,100 calories or something like that at, the, at this point. I'm doing 20 minutes of cardio. So it's like, Damn. and I'm still, and I'm still dropping weight. I like, I checked in this morning and I'm like, my weight's down again. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? So yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Um, but, but again, it's, it's, it's because you, your body gets to a point where it's like, I just need fuel and you fuel and you fuel and you fuel. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I have no desire to go and binge on anything though. I have no desire. I've been in prep since what did I, when did I start prep? What May? Yeah. Cause we started around the same time I started in early April and you were just like a few weeks after yeah. me. I think it was yeah. May. I think it was right at the beginning of May. So okay. I started, I've been in prep since May and my body's just like, no, I'm good. Like, just give me more. And I feel fine. Like, I don't feel like, I don't feel like crap. I don't feel any of those things. Um, you know, and, and that's, that's just, again, I, I don't have those hunger signals, like telling me I need to go eat a bunch of shit. Like I used to, does that make sense? Like, totally. I'm like, I feel totally. good. And like, even when I go off season in December, like again, being vocal with your coach, I mean, I'm, I've told Jamie and I'm going to tell her again, I don't, I don't want to do the free meals. Like I want to do what I'm doing now. I want to stay, cause I can eat whatever I want to eat. If I go to, I've got, I've got 20, 21, 2200 calories a day. You can eat whatever the hell you want to eat. Just have a few bites of it. You know what I mean? Well, that's the thing is if you get your macros up high enough, yeah. like you feel so satiated. You don't need to binge. And I'm with you. Yeah. Like my calories are like 2200 right now. And I checked in with Jamie. I was down a lot of weight, but I was like, I'm good here right now. Like yeah. I don't need to push more food. I need to get back into training, but like I'm comfortable here and I don't feel like I need to go eat off plan because I'm satiated. Yep, exactly. And like, you know, and I still have stuff like there's, there's ways to still diet and have like 
treats. Like I have my cereal, I have, so that, you know, there's, there's all sorts of fall stuff out now. So I have pumpkin spice Cheerios. So I put those in my, my yogurt and that's like my last meal for the night. So that's like my little dessert. And it's, it's not a hundred percent clean, but it works. And it's like, you know, like I digest it well, it tastes good. That's my little dessert. I don't need anything more than that. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm good. Like we've had, like Dan bought me these ice cream bars and they've been sitting in the freezer since my birthday. I have not touched them. I was like, I have no desire. I, anytime I think maybe I want an ice cream bar, I look at the macros and it's like 39 grams of fat. And I'm like, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm like, I don't need that. If you that. like ice cream, you need a creamy then at that point. <laughs> I know. I know. Well, everybody says that. Everybody says I need one of those ninja creamies. And I just, I'm that person that I will use it once and then I won't use it again. So. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I use like it definitely in my it. off season, but yeah, no. Well, it's it's actually not that bad because I agree with you. But it's <laughs> I mean, I've thought about it a thousand times. I really have, but I just haven't. I just haven't, I'm, I'm a convenience person, and like even with my food, like my chicken, like Dan cooks on my chicken. He loves to grill, yeah. so he's happy with that. We've talked about this, so he grills on my chicken. I don't cook anything. Zero. I cook nothing. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, I stick my grits in the microwave. That's all I do. <laughs> That's my extent of cooking. I do nothing. As far as cooking I mean, for convenience, concerned. I order my chicken from Mega Fit Meals, but I still yeah. have to make a pot of rice at this point every single day. And now Drew's yeah. dieting too. So now it's definitely every single day. So. See, I do those sticky bowls. I do the sticky white rice. Yeah. So even that, those I stick in nope. the microwave too. Even that I don't Easy cook. peasy. Easy peasy. <laughs> and I would, I would do rice, except that I'm not, again, going back to consistency, there's just so many things that could be off if I cook a pot of rice, like the water could be off or whatever. So I just stick with the, st the sticky bowls. So I know it's exactly what, what the, what's it, what it says in the bowls, the exact grams and all of that. So. I don't yep. know. Convenience, you, you already again. you already know that I have clients that screw that one up. Yeah, right? uh huh, so, uh huh. Guys, yep. come on. It's really, and you know, it's 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 once people understand how easy it is to stay that consistent, it's hard to go off of it too. I think. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, well, I just because get into a no brainer habit. for you yeah. at that point. You know, I just get, you just get into habit. your habit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I make the same pot of rice every time. It's 600 grams of raw, four cups of water, make it. If I need multiple, then I'll do a pot and then I'll do a second because you just, you get that consistency and That's then right. you're just in your routine and you're making it. But it's That's right. obviously people struggle up front, especially with like starting a new fitness journey because they're, you know, just trying to get the macros down and they're like, well, how am I going to get this food? And then they're just yeah. so overwhelmed. So sometimes it takes a long time to find what that routine is and what foods yep. work for you. So you do the sticky rice, microwavable sticky rice that works. You hit your macros. It's convenient for you. For me, I would want to do a pot of rice, but yep. at the end of the day, we still hit our it's goal. The same thing. Yeah. It's the same, <laughs> same thing. Goal. Same thing. And it's still, and it's still, and it's still easy and it's still consistent. You know, it's still all of the things like making a pot of rice is not hard you know what i mean yeah. like yeah you know? i mean and honestly it's not hard but some days i'm like it's just one thing you have to do in the middle of a busy day so i get it i totally yeah. get it <laughs> i will say this so dan's been into this like um he he went to costco and he bought these cornish game hens have you ever had those no so they're like little they're like little mini chickens okay like i've done like a baby hen before but kind I don't, of. I don't, okay but, but they're smaller but, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's like a single serving for per person, wow. like an actual, okay. you know, I, it's, it's more than a single serving, but that's what it's meant to be. You know, right. um, the thing with them is they're, they're higher in fat cause you've got the dark meat and everything like that too. So it's not, it's not, it's not just white meat that you're getting, you're getting everything else too. So Dan's been into cooking those. So he tells me like the morning of, if he's going to cook one, because I have to be able to a lot for the fat. And I'm Correct. like, I'm like, I can't, I'm like, you can't tell me at the end of the day because I don't got enough fat left. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know what's, you know what is interesting is overseas, like when I would order a chicken dish, it was always dark meat. Yeah. No breast. Yeah. Yeah. So and like, oh, it's good. I, I prefer it because again, the higher fat content is, is it's tasty. it's tastier, you know, yeah, but of course for it, you know, right. so this last week he cooked two of those and then he also cooks them or he, he bakes them and he cooks them with, um, uh, potatoes and like carrots and stuff like that too. So, yeah. so I even weigh, I weigh all that stuff out. Like and he doesn't add anything to it. Doesn't add sodium. None of that kind of stuff. It's just, it's, um, spices. That's it. Like he just fresh spices and that's it. So when that's I actually, easy. yeah. So when I actually have it for myself, I add my, I measure my sodium and I measure all the stuff that I'm putting on it when I'm finishing it out. So that's been, that's been really nice. I've just, I've had two of those this, this past week. So it's been good. That's where most of my fats have come from. And then he put a, he marinated a, um, Two of them yesterday. I see. I see them sitting in the refrigerator. I'm like, I hope he doesn't cook them today. I was doing this yesterday. I'm like, I hope he doesn't cook them today. 
because I don't have room for that today. <laughs> I was like, but I will tomorrow. I'll be able to. I'll be able to plan my fats for tomorrow. <laughs> You're like, all right, go ahead and change it for tomorrow. No, but he literally does that. Like, if he's gonna do something different, because he does. He's a he cooks. I don't. So you know, if he's gonna do something, he lets me know so I can plug it in ahead of time. Like he'll usually let me know the day the day before, <laughs> so I can plug Perfect. it in ahead of time. Yeah, and of course. <laughs> Yeah. And of course, I mean, I'm still a month out from my next show, so I can still do this right now. Right. Once I get to that two week, I always say when I get to the two week mark, my, my meals are exactly the same every single day. <laughs> when I get to the two week mark, even now, like that's, yeah, yeah that's my, my off thing is like, I have a Cornish game head instead of chicken breast, you know? So it's not like, yeah, you know, and, I, and again, it goes back to a protein. Yeah. It's like, I can go, I can digest it. That's the other thing too. I always tell, I always tell girls when they ask me if they can have something different, I said, yeah, as long as you can digest it, okay. You know, Correct. like like my one girl that I have going into this coming weekend, I told her, I said, be prepared with more fats. I said, because we got to, we got to, <clears throat> A, we got to soften her up. She's too hard. I said, we got to soften you up. I said, so be prepared. I'm going to give you more fats. She's like, okay, I'll just bring more peanut butter. I said, yes, but <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, but too much peanut butter can cause the runs. <laughs> I was like, so um, let's, let's pick some other fats and stuff like that. So she talked about some other things that we could do. And I was like, as long as you digest that stuff, okay, that's fine. We don't want to, we just don't want to be loading you with a ton of peanut butter because that can cause some digestional discomfort if we do that. So, um, so there's, 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 there's thresholds to everything. <laughs> For sure. So, so with where you're at in terms of the show, Mm -hmm. You know, obviously I know your goal was to come into this next show fuller, mm -hmm. um, yep. with where you're at with like your macros and obviously talking to Jamie and things like that. And physique wise, like, do you feel like you're going to be keeping this feed going into the show? Do you feel like there's going to need to be any kind of depletion point? Like, how are you guys feeling about how you're looking and with this far out to stage? Well, I just, I just sent my check-ins in this morning and I'm significantly fuller this week than I was last week. Like I can see it in my pictures. So if I continue to fill out like this, I don't think I'm going to need to cut anything more. And I don't think okay. I'm going to need to like manipulate anything, but we've got four weeks. So a lot of things can happen in four weeks. So my ideal situation would be that we just stay like this, right? Because the biggest thing that I, that I'm fixing from the last show is more than anything is my poses because one thing that got in my head from Daytona is, you know, uh, Greg mentioned, he's like, you dropped your glutes when you transitioned into your back pose. And I was like, really? I dropped my glutes. Like, so I, so I overcompensated for that when I was in Georgia. Um, so I, I realized that when I saw my pictures and I saw my photos and my videos, I'm like, I overcompensated for that, for that critique from, from Daytona, <clears throat> Daytona. And in doing so, I really flattened my glutes out a lot. So I was like, I can't, I can't pose like that. I, I, you know, I just have to be in shape and just allow the shape to show is what I need to do. So, you know, there's a lot of little things that I've been changing with my poses so that I can do that. Um, I feel like right now, if I was to just like, I don't know, bring, bring my water down a little bit, I'd probably be right on as far as where Perfect. I want to be to get on stage. You know what I mean? Perfect. Like, like I'm just, not, I've got a little bit of inflammation in my hamstring area, but that's it at this point. So that's just a little bit of pulling stuff in. Um, but really where we've made the most headway is through the body work I've been doing. So I've mentioned this, like I'm going in for massages and dry needling every single week. So that's been doing a lot. And actually this morning, um, Jason, who does my dry needling stuff, he, last time I was in there, he said, um, I want you to take photos for me. Uh, cause I went on Tuesday. Yeah. He said, I want you to go or no, Monday. I'm sorry, Monday. And then I went for a massage Tuesday. He said, I want pictures for me on Thursday. I said, like, that's perfect. Cause that's when I do my, my progress okay. photos. Yeah. He's like, so I want, he's like, I want them a little different though. He's like, I don't want the downward angle. I want the upward angle so that I can see your upper glute and how your hips and all that kind of stuff. So I did that this morning and I sent him those photos. Um, so that when I go, I just want to pause and say, this is the difference between a massage therapist and a yeah. body work person. For right, all right, of right. you that question, what does that mean? This body work person is working on Sean to bring out a better physique for her, which is why he wants check-in photos. Right, that's right. My body work person also asks for check-in photos because they want to make sure that what they're doing in their room mm -hmm. is translating to what the photos show before they get on stage. So I just wanted to pause real quick and make that point. No, absolutely. That is a really big part of a body work therapist is that they're also aligning with your coach and what the look is versus just right. going in and working on something or giving 100%. you a total body massage. Yep. So, so you're absolutely right. Cause that was the whole thing. He's like, you know, as far as your, 
um, symmetry between your glutes right now were looking really, really good. Like, cause he did the dry needling on, on, on Monday. And, um, he's like, I just want to see what it looks like once you get in your poses. I was like, okay, cool. So I was taking those photos this morning and because of the way I had to angle the camera, I felt like one side of me was lit up more than the other. So like I could see the divot on my right side, but I couldn't see the divot on my left. So on the upper part of my glute. So I took a couple of different angles, a couple of different move, you know, moves around. And I sent him my normal progress photos and I sent him my walk to the back because I wanted him to be able to see what happens when I walk and when the outer part of my glute just gets pulled, right? So <laughs> he responded right back. He's like, like, remind me to do TFL when you come in. I was like, all right, got it. You know, so um, so just little TFL things like that. Sucks. Yeah, 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 Sorry. yeah. <laughs> I know. But so that's that's you know, and again, that came from me sending him and I and I can see I can see where I need improvement. And it's good to know that he knows how to fix it from there. You know what I mean? Like totally. Okay, cool. And you and you also feel validated in what you're feeling yeah. internally or seeing through your photos. There is a reason for it, and they know how to fix it. That's you right. Know? And and That's there's right. been sometimes I show up to Kristen, my body work girl, and I'm like, "This is what I'm feeling," and she's like, "I don't really know what's going." And then she starts working on me, and she figures it out. But it it is. It's very validating. Yep, it is. And it's like you know, it's one of those things too that now there's just certain things that I wasn't aware of. And now that we're getting in there and we're moving stuff around, I can feel it better and I can feel what it is that we need to, or what we've been doing or what we've been changing. Um, I have these like, it's almost, it's almost like um, nodules almost. It's not nodules, but it feels like it when I sit on the, on the foam roller on either side. Like of my an glute. adhesion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's on either yeah. side of my glute. And anytime that I sit on that, on the foam roller, it does not go anywhere. It's yep. stuck. And I'm just like, I know that's a problem. I know that's a problem. So when I do the dry needling, that's where the needles are going into to try to loosen all that up. And then when I go into my massage work, he goes in there too, but he also goes to the connective tissue around it as well. And what I've noticed as we've been progressing that over the last few weeks is every time I sit on that foam roller, it's a little bit looser and a little bit looser and a little bit looser. And it's not, it's not resolved. I know that, but it's getting better. I can feel it. You know, I can physically feel it when I sit on the, on the foam roller now. Um, one thing that I'm really hyper aware of now is in my back pose, my left glute, because we've been dry needling that one as well, I can feel the connective tissue on the upper part of my glute as it pulls on my adductor on the inside when I'm in my back wow. pose. And I could never feel that before. I can feel it now. I'm like, oh, there it is. It's tight right there. I can feel it. So it was always doing that. But now that we're getting in there and opening up the, the all the adhesions, everything, now I'm starting to feel that the, the mind Other places. is there. And that's what, that's what Jason said too. He's like, you know, a lot of times what happens is you have all of the, this jumbled up in there that your nerve center and your mind is not connecting to those areas. So when we start opening it all up, now all of a sudden those, those pathways are getting there and you can feel it now. And now Correct. you're like, oh, okay, that's, that's it. And that's what's happening right now. Like I'm feeling all those areas that were just kind of numb before, yeah. you know? Um, and I mentioned this too, like when I do, when I do my um, ham, hamstring curls now, um, I did this out of necessity because the shack that I work out in my backyard, we don't have a curl, a, a, a hamstring curl. So I started using bands to do the hamstring curl. So uh, in the process of doing that, I was like, I started touching my hamstring as I'm curling and I'm like, Oh, I'm connecting to this a whole lot better than when I just sit on the machine. So I'm now I ask how your training connection is too, which I'm sure is a lot better. Yes. <laughs> and I can feel those areas that are, that are numb, that are waking up. You know, I can feel those areas where I'm really activating it, you know, all those kinds of things. And again, it's like, I did this out of necessity just because I don't have the machine or the equipment. But now I'm training and doing those leg curls like that all the time because now I can feel it more versus a lot of times. And this is something too, like based on your body mechanics and things like that as well, like leg curl machines are not the best for me when it comes to my length of my legs, <laughs> you know, like I don't feel it in the areas I'm supposed to feel it a lot of the time. Um, a lot of times it pulls in the lower back if I don't get the back, back perfectly correct and all that kind of stuff, you know. So these are things to be starting to be aware of as well. And now that I, again, now that I'm doing it with the bands, I'm like, okay, I'm getting into the spot that I want to get into better than I ever did on the machines, you yeah. know. So 
And it also goes to show too, like on paper, you know, the with uh, research and things like that, like a seated hamstring curl is supposed to be the best for mm -hmm. hamstring development. Mm -hmm. However, if you do not have a seated hamstring curl machine that has proper adjustments, like a prime mm -hmm. where you can do the lap pad, you could do the ankle pad, you could do mm -hmm. the seat to make sure that it's, you know, appropriate for someone like you, most gyms don't have that, especially right. at what, what your home gym is at Planet Fitness. Of course they don't have that. So right. it's, it's also a true testament of not every exercise, even if it's scientifically proven on paper to be the best, it's not best for everyone. So you That's have right. to find what works Absolutely. best for you, your body and your mechanics. Absolutely. And also to go back and touch on what you were saying before about training with a trainer in the gym a couple times a week. I really want to emphasize that because you're, you've been an athlete your whole life, you know, and I have a lot of girls that are not, you know, that, that I work with that are lifestyle clients that want to become competitors or whatever. And it takes me like pounding them and saying, send me form videos, send me form videos send me form videos <laughs> like over and over and over until they finally do. And I'm like, well, this is why you're not developing correctly because you're not doing the exercise correctly. Right. And I can give them tips and things like that through, you know, through the, the check-in process. But what I would prefer is that they have somebody in person that can take totally. them through each of those. So they can really start to feel that because until you have that Eureka moment, you're just playing weight around, you know? Yeah. I mean, um, my athletes that are growing the best right now are the ones that are heading out to my gym in Florida and getting yeah. a training assessment done from my general manager out there, Hobby, or the ones that are working with a trainer. Yeah. Um, you know, for me, I have, you know, just like you said, I've, I've been doing this a long time. I have my bachelor's degree in exercise physiology. Yeah. Um, obviously, I've made it to the Olympia, but I'm also human. Um, it was actually, I, I think I touched on this briefly. I didn't really go into things before the Olympia, but... Um, after prejudging at Legions, which I did end up winning, but mm -hmm. Drew and I had a discussion. We mm -hmm. had discussions mm -hmm. and he was like, I want to tell you this because no matter what happens tonight, I want you to know this. I've been watching your training in the gym and it absolutely sucks. And I was like, okay, what's up? And he's like, you're just going in there and check boxing. Like all of your, you know, cause I preach, you know, going in and, you know, getting off my phone. And I wasn't doing that the last few weeks going into the Olympia. He's like, your training sucks right now. You're losing tissue. Like, I don't like what you look like right now. I hate what you're training like right now. I was like, mm -hmm. okay. So obviously I win legions. I'm glad that he said it yeah. before finals. And then Monday morning I hired a trainer um, and I was training with him into the Olympia and I was noticing from the weights on my log book. And then what my trainer was pushing me on, I mean, some of these, it was 20 pounds up from what I was doing. So it, again, I had to drop my ego at that point. Like it, it, and three years ago, if Drew would have said that to me, I would have been like, fuck you, dude. I'm doing what I want to do. You know what I mean? But I want to be better and I yeah. want to be pushed. And I, those last two weeks going into the Olympia with this trainer, I was not training at that intensity at all during the prep from really maybe the beginning when food was still high and things like that. So it's a, it's a reminder for me too. And what really is it? It's not getting comfortable. If training yes. feels comfortable, if it feels like, all right, that was a good session. Like you're probably not pushing hard enough. And, you know, Drew's um, YouTube just came out with a body fusion about training and, you know, what the definition is of intensity. Intensity is not like these high reps, you know, 15, 20, where you're like, Ooh, that was a good workout. It's not mm -hmm. met. It's, working to failure and a lot of the time especially like you're saying with newer athletes they don't know how to they work to failure. They, yeah, they don't know what it I, is right and yeah. i did not know how to work to failure until i worked with my first coach and he taught me that i was like yep. oh right? yep literally what what everybody always says 99 percent of the time the brain is going to fail before the body does it is it is true like 99 percent of bodybuilding is your mindset mm -hmm. and what you tell yourself and how much you trick yourself into doing the hard shit, you know and right. that's if you know we're all getting ready to be in improvement season right now seasons winding down like if there's one thing you could take away as you enter your improvement season it's like keep raising your training intensity those are the people that are growing those are the mm -hmm. people that are staying leaner because <clears throat> their training intensity is so high when cardio is low in an off season and they're seeing the most improvements in a short amount of time um it is true what drew said we say it all the time you are really one off season away from being a champion from getting yeah. that pro card if you put in the time and the effort, you yep. know, but some people uh, we call it checkbox work, you know, they go in and they're like, check, I did it. You're going to get it, get out what you put into it. That's right. Well, going back to, you know, finding what works for you as well. Like going back to the example of the, of the hamstring crawl, like 
most people don't think you can get a good workout with bands, you know, and I'm using the resistance bands in order to do the, the leg curl because I feel it better. You know, there's, there's a difference. That's more intense for me than just swinging weight around on the on leg extension, you know, or leg curl. So there's, there's different ways to do this. And like, if you, if you don't think you're pushing yourself hard enough, find things like play with stuff. That's what I did in order to find that particular solution with the, with the resistance band, because this is the other thing too. It's like, you may not, you, you just use what you've got to, to, to play with the stuff too. Like I use a, it's a resistance band that I get from Prozis and it's a 30, 35 pound resistance band. And it's a, it's a, it's a elastic a resistance loop. band. No, it's got, it's got different hook, like different. Um, it is a loop, but it's got the different spots in there. Cool. So if you go closer, it's going to be tighter. If you go further away, it's going to be looser, you know, that kind of okay. thing. So I just started playing with that and feeling. And the other thing that it makes me do too, because I stand on one foot. So I do it, I do it individually for a leg and I touch my hamstring in the back and I hold my core tight and I just stand there and I just really brain to my, to my hamstring, brain to my hamstring, slow up, slow down. It's full, like it's tension through the entire movement, never dropping the tension because it's a resistant resistance band. It's not a, it's not a machine where the weight stops. You know, so there's different things that you can do to improve your overall performance that don't include upping the weight, that don't include, you know, trying to to injure yourself through this stuff. You know what I mean? Like just the simple factor of standing on one foot, balancing and holding your core tight makes it 10 times harder than sitting in a machine. (laughs) You know what I mean? Some people can't do that. Um, One of the one of the um, assessments that we do when, you know, athletes are coming out to hobby and to Drew is a single leg stand test. And you'd be surprised how many people do not have the stability to be able to stand on one foot and perform an exercise. So then we have to kind of take the exercise down even farther. And the progression is to be able to stand on one foot, which is wild. But like, you know, we forget in bodybuilding that bodybuilding is not meant to increase strength. We're supposed to look Look. strong. So a lot of women are then weak in their abdominals or in their stability at muscles because they're not focusing on those things. So we're looking at an aesthetic, not on strength, you know? Mm -hmm. So the perfect bodybuilding plan is one that kind of encompasses everything, especially like that internal core strength, because that's why you can stand on one foot successfully. And absolutely. It's hundred percent. It's very, it's very interesting. The amount that we see that aren't able to do that. And just simple things too. Like, because I train in my backyard, I don't train with my, my shoes on ever. Like I'll train upper body with my shoes on, but that's it. Um, that will help too with your stability though. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I I was one of my girls, uh, she just sent me videos last week and she's in the gym doing, doing glutes. And she has those, those like raised, like cross trainers. I was like, take your shoes off, take your shoes off. I'm like, that's the first thing. And then we'll fix everything else. First thing I look at in lower body training is what the shoes are. What are the, cause 'cause if they're wearing those soft shoes and a lot of the time the sneakers now have those curves, which are great for walking, they're not great for training. You know, so I wear, I wear a shoe like that to the gym and then I take Mm -hmm. the shoe off when I'm going to each exercise because you, you can't feel the exercise. A lot of the time, if like somebody's doing a hip thrust and the movement itself looks great, but they're wearing a sneaker, I'll tell them to take the sneaker off and then there is, there is science to grounding. You know, people talk yes. about grounding all the time, going outside with your shoes off and standing, like there is science to that. So 100%. them just taking their shoes off and being able to literally just put their feet on the on the floor and ground themselves activates their hamstrings so much better because they're able to feel their feet and really drive through 100%. it. 100%. So if you have a shoe like that, try it, you know, take yeah, your take shoes off. off. And when you go, when you go into the hip thrust, it's fine. Wear socks and like, try to see if it feels different. Yep. Wear socks in the gym. <laughs> don't go, don't go, don't go completely barefoot. <laughs> Please wear socks in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> but do it for real. Like, I don't know about any, any gym I've been to that's told me to put my sneakers back on. You know, it's funny when Drew and I first opened up our gym years ago, one of the very first clients came in and he was barefoot. Like he was a barefoot man. He never, he never wore, and we were like, no, you can't train because we were so nervous, like the yeah, insurance yeah, yeah, and things yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. He was like, yeah. I will not sign up here if I cannot train barefoot. So we just had him sign an extra waiver and it was fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. but it's it's becoming more and more common now. And especially they have like the barefoot shoes yes. and, you know, things like that. But there's a lot of benefit that you could get. And especially on a lower body day of training barefoot. 
yep. with that. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and again, going back to you, just got you got to find your environments to work for you. We've talked about that before too. Like that's why I do like working out in my backyard because nobody's there to bug me. You know, and I can just I can just do my thing, and it's it's cool. Like so, you got to find what works for you as well. And I do, you know, I go to the I go to the shop gym a couple times a week because I like that kind of environment too. But I've completely I've I've gotten rid of Planet Fitness. I don't go to Planet Fitness anymore. So. Oh. My I apologies, I misspoke on that. <laughs> the only time that I go to Planet Fitness is if I'm traveling. That's it, because it's they're they're everywhere, so they're convenient. You know what they're I mean? Easy. But yeah. But yeah. other than that, I can't stand the environment. Cannot stand yeah. it. So I just don't do it. And, and gym environment is everything. Yeah. You know, depending on where you're at in your journey. Like the last two weeks going into the Olympia, I didn't step foot in my gym that I have out here yeah. because I just wanted to be left alone. Yeah. Um, you know, but now that I'm back, like that I want to go back into that environment, you know. So uh -huh. it also depends mentally kind of where you're at in your season too. And just like you said, like doing whatever's best for you at that time and what's gonna motivate you the best. And availability, because the reason why I don't have to go to Planet Fitness anymore is I have cardio equipment, I have a squat rack, right. I have all that stuff at the house. If I didn't have that here at the house, then yes, I would be going back to Planet Fitness. Different, different, yeah, yeah different story. Yeah, yeah. You you got you gotta do what you gotta do. You know what I mean? So um, but yeah, I mean as far as that's concerned, um, We'll see what Jamie has to say about my check-in today. But uh, like last week, she gave me more food, kept my cardio the same. I like doing the 20 minutes of cardio. I like having a little boost of um, my heart rate pumping up a little bit. Um, my steps are only I do too. 8K. My steps are only 8K. So it's not a lot at all. Um, yeah. And I'm just burning. I'm just burning. So, you know, the, the whole goal, this this time frame between the two shows was to put some fullness on. And I feel like I've done that. So I don't think I need to do a whole lot to change that. Um, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. It's like, it's almost like it's it, again, going back to, it's almost like it's too easy right now. <laughs> like, well, you you're know? reversing into the show. Which yeah. Obviously, like you said, is the best you know place to be. And especially with your goal of like, really just kind of nailing that posing factor, like everything is working, you know, toward that goal, yeah. you know, so you're in a, a really great spot right now. I'm right. excited for you. Well, I'm going to touch on this too, real quickly, because I've had two clients that I've had an issue with this. They're both, they're both competing this weekend. So they'll probably both read this or watch this, but, um, if I give you a step goal, please don't go over that step goal. <laughs> In fact, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, guys, you need to sit down, stop moving because you're burning through all of your food. I was like, you know, there, there's certain reasons why we give clients certain things when it comes to food. Like, you know, one of the girls has issues with core control. So I really want to make sure that her core is tight. I don't want to have to feed her a lot. But if you're going to go out there, I tell you to do 8K steps and you do 20, there's a problem. <laughs> You know, like, then I need to, to give you more food to offset. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. More is not better, you guys. More is, more not, is not more. Better. More is you not know. better. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's I want... In peak week. Like you yes. have to follow that point because like we put 8K steps on there. We're adjusting food to 8K steps. If you come back the next day and you did 20K steps and now you're down a pound and a half, that's not better on peak right. week. It's not mm -hmm. good. It's not good. It's not good. So <laughs> yes, you're going to get harder. Yes, you're going to get leaner, but that's not bikini. Like that's not what we want. If we we're going to women's, women's physique, we'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but we're not. That's and not trust the us, we, we love want. that look. I know. That's I know. Not the criteria. Oh my yeah. God. So it's like, so again, going back to, it's like, there's, there's a happy medium in all of this stuff. I think, I feel like right now, I feel like I'm in a good, happy medium place. Like I'm, I'm living, I feel like, I feel like I'm thriving right now. I don't feel like I'm in, in prep. Um, it's kind of, it, it I, I start thinking ahead to like when I get out of the next show and I'm, and I'm almost like, is it going to take me two, two months to put any kind of weight on? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Am it I might. It might, it you know, might. I got to be okay with that too. Like, cause I, you know, we've talked about this before too. I actually like my physique better when I'm, when I'm about 10 pounds heavier than this. So, right. um, so it's not, it's for me, it's fun. It's cool. Like it's a, I, I like the challenge and all that kind of stuff. I'm an athlete, but as far as aesthetics, I like myself a little thicker. So <laughs> like, can I, can I put some weight on real quick and in, in during Christmas? <laughs> and that's, that's where you might need some free meals. Right. Like you might be sticking to your macros at these this higher, you know, caloric intake, but you drop or you're not gaining. And then that might be where you need a refeed yep. or a, a cheat meal once a week to kind of get that caloric surplus in a yes. dirty way. You know what I mean? So, but you have to take that one week at a time when you That's actually right. start reversing, you know. That's right. And also little things like hunger hormones and cues and things like that too. Like I have not, I mean, I'm hungry, but I'm not like starving all the time. Like last year, like reversing, reversing last year, I was starving all the time. And I think part of that too is, is the type of food choices being made and not doing the, not doing the dirty, like free meals and all that kind of stuff. I think that all plays into it. So 
it's just balancing all that, you know? And then going back to what we've always talked about before, like I am in my forties. I don't want to put on a ton of weight really fast because skin elasticity, skin. you know, yep. so slowly, incrementally, Think about that, you guys. Like, make these notes when you're coming out of, out of your shows and stuff like that. The better you can manage this stuff, the better you're going to feel. You're going to look long term, right? So, you know, it's it's just it's it all goes into it. It all goes into how you're how you're going to feel and how. And again, the Sunday just, after the show, the decisions that you make into that improvement season are going to affect the next time you step on stage. So, whatever right. those choices are, that's what's going to affect the way you step on stage. So, that's if right. you binge, if you yo-yo diet. You're, you know, you have to accept that what you put into it is what you're going to receive. So, okay. so often, like I said, we get clouded in our judgment. We're like, well, it's not that bad. Or I didn't, you, you, you get real, get yeah. real with yourself. Because if you're, yep. you know, I, the, the most frustrating thing as a coach is when a client checks in and they're frustrated about the way they look, their progress, et cetera. But then also their adherence score is less than perfect. Mm -hmm. And not perfect, but you know what I mean. Like they, yeah. they definitely have room, room to improve. To improve. Mm -hmm. I just had a girl that checked in with me. Um, we didn't make any changes the last three weeks to macros. She checked in with me. She was three and a half pounds above above the last time she checked in. I went into her my fitness pal. She wasn't nutrient timing. She's macro hoarding seventy grams of carbs in her last meal of the night. Get on a call with her, and I'm like, "What do you expect? Right? Wait. Like we, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You, you know what you're supposed to be doing. I know. I just, and that's okay. But you can't be frustrated that's right. that you're up when you know that you are off somewhere. Like if that's you right. Hit everything perfectly, and we're just like. We don't know what happened. Well, then something else is going on hormonally, things like that. But if you're going to check in with your coach and be frustrated with the result, but also know that you have more that you could have done, you have to be real with yourself. Right, you know, we absolutely. have to be accountable and accept responsibility for our actions. And listen, we're human. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have days where I'm macro hoarding too, but That's I'm not right. going to go to Jamie and be like, oh, poo, my weight is up five pounds. This, like, I'm going to own it. Say, I'm, yeah. up. I'm sorry. Like, what do we do? You know what I mean? So we, we, we have to be adults and responsible and accountable. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that that's, that, I think it's a perfect place to end that because um, it's as coaches, it's frustrating because we want to see you do better, but we're just the guide. You know, at the end of the day, once you read our check-in, you got to go do it and put it into action as a, as a, as a, um, a client. And we're both clients as well. So we understand that too. We know that if we don't do it correctly, we're going to pay for it. We can't complain about it. Can't be mad about something that we did to ourselves. You know what I mean? So it's like with, we both, the coaches and the athletes have to take responsibility for their actions, right? So yeah. if you've got somebody, if you've got a coach that is paying attention to you and doing things to try to make this the best they possibly can for you, stick with that person and do what they tell you to do. <laughs> You know, and communicate if something's not working. Yes, There's plenty yes, of times yes, where yes, like yes. people are like, "Hey, like this isn't working for me." I just had a client that also checked in yesterday. She's like, "Hey, can like we decrease the step count? And if we need to reduce food a little bit because of that, please. I'm really, really busy at work right now. No problem. I even yeah. reduced her step count, kept her, kept her macros the same. But communicate that so we know how to help versus you just checking in every week saying that you're not hitting your steps and not communicating what the That's issue right. is so we can adjust it. So That's right. we we can only fix things if we know what's going on we say that and we're on time, your team but... yeah we're on your team this is a good example too i had a client this week she checked in no problem um but she had uh had a piece of chocolate cake during a party thing and she was she had digestional discomfort all this kind of stuff right so i wrote her back and i told her all the things we just talked about with the with the cheesecake with the tablet i told her all those things and um and she didn't respond back to me till the following day. She's like, I'll be honest. She's like, I was afraid to read what you had to say because I was afraid you'd be mad at me for the chocolate cake. I was like, I'm not mad at you. I was like, I appreciate you telling me. I was like, yeah. you know, we, we all screw up. But, and, but like I said, I'm like, now just notate how you feel right now so that when it comes time to have chocolate cake again, you don't do that because you don't want to feel like this. I was yeah. like, but I'm not going to be mad at you. I was like, no, tell me. Tell me yeah. what happened because I can see it in your in your your waist measurement. I can see that you're bloated. You know, I can see that we didn't make as much progress as we should have this week. I can see all those things. But if you hadn't told me, I wouldn't know where it came from. You know, yeah. now that I know where it came from, okay, cool. It happened, is what it is. You enjoyed it, but then it, you paid for it afterwards. Let's not do it again. That's all. That's all. That's a big deal. And these are the experience <laughs> that teach us, right? Like yeah, just like right. a poor reverse. Like, 
just like you told her, which is great advice, like notate how you feel right now. We don't yeah. learn from everything being perfect. <clears throat> if everything was perfect, we would never learn. We only can learn from when things go wrong right. as long as we're taking note of how are we going to change it for next time and that's applying right. what we learn next time. That's how we learn and keep getting better. And Absolutely. that's, you know, going back to where I was at in Greece, I have learned from so many failures, what works and what doesn't for me. And that's why I can now be successful with going out of town for 15 days and dropping weight. But it's taken a lot of failures to get to that point. That's right. So that's, it's, it's a good thing when you fail, as long as you learn and apply it. 100%. Absolutely. All right. Fantastic. That Again, that's a good place to stop. <laughs> We keep adding more anecdotes. Wait, but wait more. But wait, there's more. I know. I know. <laughs> hey, for, for not having a direct topic for today. Yeah, I know, right? A lot of good well, we knew stuff. after being after being off for two weeks, you know, I was like, we'll just go in and start talking. I'm sure we'll have plenty to talk about. We can keep going probably for two more hours, you know? <laughs> totally. And so, I did want to say thank you to you and Jen, yes, you know, for, yeah, yeah. you know, taking over when I was out of town and kind of giving me that time. I literally didn't have like service the entire time. I just really wanted I to kind of unplug that. and disconnect. So thank you guys for holding down the fort. I missed you. It's so yeah. great to be back. Um, but yes, thank you for kind of handling everything well. Absolutely. That's we, we got your back, but that's what we're here for. You know, we keep we, yes. we hold each other up when we need and to. And you guys I'm had sure. a really good podcast. I was like, we did. We had All fun. Right, Jen, trying to take my co host spot. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was fun. I love you. It was fun. She's going into yeah. her peak week next week. So yeah, we'll, we'll have lots more to talk about with her too. So, awesome. you know, crossing our fingers for that one as well. She's look, she's looking really good. So I'm excited. So, um, so with that guys, thank you so much for coming back. Um, and yes, Jordan, we missed you. We're glad to have you back again this week and we'll be back again next week. Of course, maybe we'll have an actual topic next week. We'll see. <laughs> but other than that, this is episode 63 and like, comment, subscribe, share all of the fun things. And for Behind the Bikini, we are out.